Hey folks, Glenn May here with BassResource.com and I'm sitting here with Hank Parker. I don't have to introduce him. <laughs> Hank Parker. Hello guys. Hank, there's a lot of people on the forums that have questions. They want to know what's going on with you and if you can, let's, let's go through some of these questions and see if we can answer a few of them. All right, right? I'm pretty transparent. Well, let's go through the first one here. This is from Dean from Tulsa, Oklahoma and he says, if you've already left home for a day of fishing, what one item would you go back to get? You know, would that be sunscreen, insect repellent, your cell phone, sunglasses? What would it be? Well, I, I hate being honest, but you have to be. You know, uh, I'd like to say, oh, I'd go back after that sunscreen because I got to take really good care. Don't want them to deal with any skin cancer. I'd like to say, man, there's no possible way I could leave home without my solar bat sunglasses. I got to have them. But truthfully, as I got five or six pair in my boat for the simple reason I don't want to ever be without them. Uh, but I would have to go back to get that stupid cell phone. I can't get away from it. And they never know, hey, at my age, you could have an emergency call. You know, you got to get some help out there. So uh, I have to have that cell phone. So if I left my phone, unfortunately, I'd turn around and go back and get it. Now you're not gonna play video games and things like that on Well, right? I'm not gonna say I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not making any promises, but I gotta have that say, well, Martha might need one to get a hold of me and hey, oh, Martha calls. Well, you better have your oh, phone yeah. then, absolutely. Yeah, that's have, right. Have you ever accidentally left the boat at home? Left the boat at home? Yeah. If you no, I've never done that, but I tell you what I have done. Yeah. I've gone to the tournament site a week early. Oh. Get there there would be any boats in the parking lot. I'm thinking, where's everybody at? <laughs> Oh, that's, that's next week. Yep, yep. So that's about as bad as leaving the boat at home. Yep, <laughs> I hear you. Well, let's move on to the next question here. It's from uh, Seth Duffy from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And he said, would you fish another big money tournament if you had the opportunity? No, I wouldn't. Uh, you know, they gave, uh, they gave, I think Fritz took advantage of it, several of the, the, the classic winners. They gave everybody an opportunity. I think this year was the first year, maybe last year, uh, that was a former classic winner uh, to come back and fish the elites mm. if you wanted to do that. And several of the guys took advantage of that. I would, I, I, bass fishing and tournament fishing are two different things. I love to bass fish as much as I ever have. I'm more knowledgeable than I've ever been but I'm not as sharp as I once was. I'm not as competitive as I once was. And physically, I could not get back to that level. Mentally, I couldn't get back to that level. When I fished, I was so incredibly intense. I, I, and and I, I thought about it day and night. I set strategies day and night. And I was what I was. I wasn't the best fisherman, but I worked as hard or harder than 99% of the other guys. I really pushed myself. And I'm not at that point in my life, so I wouldn't want to taint my record. I think I finished in the money 76% of the time, more than any other angler in, in, in the history of bass, or at least for a period of time. I don't know where we are now. Kevin Van Dam's just phenomenal. I don't know what his record is. but. Mine was pretty good for consistency. I couldn't do that today. So I wouldn't want to taint who I was from a tournament perspective to who I am now. Uh, and on a short term basis, I'm just as competitive as I ever was, but long term I'm not. Mm -hmm. and, and I know that. I'm not as good a fisherman as I was. More knowledgeable, but all around I'm not as good as I was. So. I, I wouldn't want to, if I can't, and that's why I wanted to retire when I did. I retired at 36 years old. I was on the very top of my game, but I had television, and the one thing that I had, I had demands from my children that they needed. Yeah. Moms do an awesome job with boys and girls till they get to a certain point, but when those little boys get 12 and 13 years old, they need their dad. My kids wanted to race go-karts. And so I was so torn that mentally I couldn't give it 100%. I, I needed to be home, yep. and I was on the road. And I didn't want to be on the road. I wanted to be home with my kids. And so I couldn't give it all that I had. And, and so I don't 
my philosophy in my whole life has been 99 is not a good number if 100 is achievable. Shame on you if you leave anything, lay it on the table. Give it all you've got. And I'm not in the position to do that now. So I couldn't be as competitive as I once was. So why mess up your record with a half-hearted effort? So I wouldn't go back if it was a $10 million prize. I wouldn't go back and compete for it, even if they gave me a free entry in it. I just wouldn't do that. Money has never been the motivator for me to compete. People say, well, how did you approach fishing the Bassmaster Classic or that super tournament or this tournament? I approached it just like I did a club tournament. It mm -hmm. was just as important for me to win that club tournament as it was the Bassmaster Classic. Mm -hmm. Man, I, mm -hmm. I wanted to win. If I was out there and I was competing, I wanted to win. Yep. Club tournament? or classic, so it's no different. It, it, it's, it's, it's about competing against the fish and wanting to win, and that's where I was. So mm -hmm. it really, money's never been the big motivator. Okay. Uh, I love the money, don't get me wrong. I like money, it, it works <laughs> out good, and it pays bills, and it allows you to do different things, but that's not been my motivator. Mm -hmm. and, and if I can't give it my best, I don't want to be there. Got it, makes total sense. Thank you for that answer, that was a great well, answer. Appreciate well, that. Let me uh, move on real quick to the next one. It's from uh, George Greeb from Davie, Florida. And he said, I grew up watching your show as much as possible. It was always my favorite. The kids were always a big part of the program. What are they doing now, now that they've grown up and they have families of their own and their careers? I am a very blessed man. I have wonderful children. Hank Jr. has four children, two girls and two boys beautiful wife named Wendy. Uh, Billy is married to uh, a beautiful girl named Laura. No children yet, I keep working with them. Uh, <laughs> my son Ben is currently divorced, uh, uh, dating a wonderful, uh, beautiful lady uh, named Kelly, and uh, he's doing well. Uh, Billy and Hank Jr., I should have said, we're hosting a hunting show together called Hank Parker's Flesh and Blood. So we work together on the hunting side. Uh, ben uh, is a financial consultant. Uh, my son, uh, Timmy, is, uh, is a bodybuilder and a personal trainer. He also does a little cage fighting and a little boxing, which I'm not, uh, I don't want him to get hurt, but he, he's, he's a really good personal trainer. He's ripped, he, not like his dad at all. He's, he's, he's got it under control. And my daughter, Lucy, uh, who is, awesome. She has a photography business, uh, married to a great guy, my, my son-in-law, Stephen, and uh, they, they have two girls, uh, Lily and Ellie, and uh, uh, they're, they're doing great. So I've got all these kids that have got different careers going in different directions. Now Ben, my son Ben, he wanted to be a professional fisherman, and he just decided last year that he was going to get a real job and, mm -hmm. uh, and give that dream up. Uh, he worked at it really, really hard, and Ben put so much pressure on himself, and everybody said, well, you're Hank Parker's son, you should do as good as your dad, and it was just too much pressure on him, man. He's a great stick, and he whips me just about every time we get in the boat, uh, he, he whips me. Somehow, when the, when the blast off gun goes off, he gets, he gets too anxious to put a limit in the boat and he's over here, over there, over there. He just never has quite got in that groove, but he's a heck of a fisherman. And I hate that uh, it didn't work out, but he's decided now he's gonna uh, work in the financial field and give up his dream of being a professional fisherman. Mm -hmm. It's great to hear how well they're all doing. They're, they're yeah. doing great. I I'm, remember watching uh, the show when I was a kid and, and Lucy was on there. Lucy, Lucy, Lucy. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great Sweet show. Sweet little Lucy. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> great yeah. memories. Timmy, wow. Timmy told me one day, he said, Dad, I know why you named her Lucy. I said, why? He said, that's short for Lucifer. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gave those boys a hard time. I have one girl and four boys and she ruled the roost, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> that's <Woo>. awesome. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, uh, let me get let me get to the last question here. All right. uh, it's uh, Jake from Santa Ana, California, and he says, "Which fishing technique, in your opinion, seems like 
uh, let me try this again. Which fishing techniques, in your opinion, seem like a local thing in one part of the country, but once found by tournament fishermen, spread the fastest nationwide? Well, there's two that come to my mind. Uh, one was the little Carolina rig uh, that Jack Chancellor made famous called a do-nothing. Uh, that thing just took off, uh, but it was a, uh, a little uh, four-inch worm that really was birthed in Gastonia, North Carolina, and became famous on Lake Wiley. So it was just totally local. Anytime I went any place, nobody knew anything about it, and there was a doctor there named Dr. Walker, so it was a Dr. Walker worm. And uh, it was uh, just red hot on Lake Wiley, but nowhere else. And then Jack Chancellor uh, started fishing with it and caught just tons of fish on it. Called it the do nothing. Just Carolina rig it and drag it. And don't do any finesse with it. Don't shake it, just drag it. And it had two little exposed hooks and mm -hmm. that thing went nuts, man. It, it won and he won the classic on it, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, yeah. on that little do nothing worm. So it, that's one. And the other is Bobby Garland. Now I heard you say today earlier, that Guido Hibden is the one that came up with the gets it. Uh, actually, that was Bobby Garland. Guido uh, brought it to life and gave it just tons and tons of exposure. But uh, it was just a California bait, was primarily hot on a couple of California lakes and uh, uh, Lake Mead in Nevada and also Lake Powell in Arizona. And that was yeah. about it. Bobby Garland was pretty famous there. But he's the one that came up with that tube. Okay. And that thing caught fire. Oh, yeah. And somehow, I don't know, there's some rivalry between the West and the East, but I'm going to tell you, the, the West Coast guys, man, flipping, pitching, uh, uh, drop shot, tubes, all that's, uh, all that's West Coast stuff. And that is such a huge part of my arsenal today is all this West Coast innovation. So it's arguable that there are uh, several different baits that were local baits that caught fire, but the, the two that come to my mind personally is that do-nothing worm, that little four-inch worm that Jack Chancellor made famous and won the world championship on, and then Bobby Garland's tube. Absolutely, wow. Fantastic talking to you, Hank. I really do appreciate it a lot. Thanks, guys, for submitting those questions. And if you have any, what you guys got to do, you got to go check out Hank's site. You got to go to hankparker.com. Check out all the there's tips, tricks, there's, there's videos, there's articles. There's a whole bunch. There's a wealth of knowledge on there that you guys got to tap into. It's really great reading and, and watching videos, too. Tons of stuff out there. So go out and enjoy it. And if you want to get notified the next time we post one of these videos, just subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See you guys.